to all my black entrepreneurs. We got to do better, y'all. So tune in to the Entrepreneurians Podcast, where we help build better black businesses. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Entrepreneurians Podcast. I'm your girl, Tiffany Nicole, and that is Lash Trace. What up, what up, what up, y'all? And this week, we are here with some guys from Ancestry Land. Ancestry Lands. Lands. And I'm super excited because this is something different. This is something completely out of our wheelhouse. We met you guys, but we met. We didn't meet you. We met Philip at the Melanie Market, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, he got to be on the podcast." Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to step back and let you guys introduce yourselves and what Ancestry Lands is because this is an awesome concept. It's very different. Yeah, very, it's different. very different. Our different. audience has never heard anything yeah. like this unless they've <laughs> heard of you guys before. Right, exactly. <laughs> tell us, sure. please. First, tell us who you are, and then tell us all about Ancestry Lands. Got it. All right, so um, I'm Eric Kennedy. I'm currently the um, posting manager for Ancestry Lands and um, de facto kind of like IT guy with my background. And then, yep, I'm Philip Davis. Um, I'm the owner and founder of Ancestry Lands. Um, I've been doing Ancestry Lands for about maybe four years now. So originally I was up in Northern California for a while um, as a nurse. I've been a nurse for 20 years, and we had the um, big fires that happen that cause us to evacuate and a lot of homes were burned down. So just really quick and short, um, I saw that the value of the land was selling, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and people were rebuilding, traveling through the U.S. on an RV with my wife and two kids. We saw these signs for land for sale and I said, you know, um, this is something that is really interesting and eventually humans will populate enough and reach out into all these areas and land. Um, historically, my grandfather back in the you know early mid 1900s he had actually in the south virginia where i'm originally from he actually built his house on a quarter acre lot from the ground up that oh, wow. i actually grew up in as a child this is a black southern man from north carolina that bought a piece of property did not have a high school education and that house still stands today that i as wow. a baby um <laughs> you know, was breastfeeding in it myself. And that was a legacy factor. Um, fast forward to my father, who has now built his now fourth house on a plot of land in a development and um, down in Florida, which I went down there and I see all this development happening now. Mm-hmm. There's such a big demand in land and I thought it was something that um, definitely can create a legacy. So that's how Ancestry Lands was pretty much started. Um, the idea of ancestry, us being the ancestors that we are connected to, we pass that land down and create a legacy through um, through ownership. Mm-hmm. And that's ancestry. That. Lands. Yeah, <laughs> big time. I can clap for that. That's, Absolutely. That's something to clap for because uh, number one, I just want to thank you for creating ancestry lands. Um, it's very necessary for our people, um, and, and it's just very necessary for us to understand the value of land not just the financial value of land, but the historical value of the land, hmm. as far as our culture, and just, you know, um, a, a bridge between generations. is our, That's what houses do, they bridge generations. Yeah. The same way, like you say, you, you grew up in a house, um, your parents raised you in that house, or somebody raised you in that same house that you grew up in, so they might have been a part of, they might have had a different experience with that house right. than you but it's still a part of everybody's growing yeah and it just connects generations it really does yeah so i just want to thank you for creating something like that <clears throat> to help people understand there's different ways to is there's different values to uh property and land mm-hmm. and we got to understand that absolutely um one of the bigger things that i i experience is that you know as far as African Americans, we've always been landowners. And when we got pushed to the big major cities to go there for jobs, what we left behind was the land ownership. We lost that disconnect. And that was something that throughout time, we we didn't take value of was that ownership. Yeah. So now we're just, we're ownership in voting blocks, but the real power is in the land because real estate is throughout history and every culture, it's always been valued on what you own is land mm-hmm. and any apartment any dwelling building even this building here is built on land mm-hmm. and right. it doesn't it, you see this place may change buildings come up buildings come down but the value of the land stays the same it actually grows more yes, in time yes. Yes. so who owns the building is the person that really who owns the land yeah really yeah i'm thinking I'm, i was as you were speaking i'm like well 
We own our house, but we don't own the land our house is on. Right. If something was to happen, they can snatch our house because whoever owns the land can decide to do whatever they want to do with it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a crazy feeling to have. Right Amen. Now. <laughs> yeah. I was just to add to that too. So a lot of things what people don't realize is like when you even look at the McDonald's Corporation, right? Mm-hmm. McDonald's Corporation, yeah, they sell hamburgers, they got this, but they're one of the largest mm-hmm. landholders yes. in the face of the history. Yes. Yes. That well, documentary was crazy. Yeah, no, Watching right. that, I was like, wait, because <laughs> McDonald's is all about real estate. It's not yes. about yeah, they are French fries and hamburgers. It's about real estate. And I was I was like, whoa, that was gonna be, that was different. Yeah. And to even add to that, when you're talking about real estate value, you look at a, a company like Starbucks, right? Starbucks, whenever you see a Starbucks, the land value goes up when everybody, mm-hmm. somebody plops a Starbucks yeah. down somewhere. Oh, God. So as far as a valuation tool, Starbucks is itself, it, it sells itself as, hey, you know, when we come into a land, we're going to increase the value of a property. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's Absolutely. another thing, yeah. isn't that? That's crazy. Now we yeah. see that going on here. See, I don't see too many places that have the effect that Starbucks has. Mm-hmm. Well, just to announce they're coming to a neighborhood, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. McDonald's doesn't do that. No. As a matter of fact, McDonald's might do the very opposite. Yeah, appreciate it. Because I know <laughs> Chestnut Hill and yeah. Chestnut Hill, when they were trying to put the McDonald's on Germantown Avenue, the people at Chestnut Hill were like, "Oh no, you're not putting no McDonald's up here." Mm-hmm. It was there for a while, it's and bring that was going the riffraff. Yep. Up here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah. Yep, I know. Like, like looking at the real estate, like we used to talk about real estate all the time. We found out that anytime you see a large development of big box stores mm-hmm. popping up in areas, oh, they're about to build some houses around here mm-hmm. because the big box store owners get the info before we get the info, saying, mm-hmm. "Hey, this area right here is going to start being populated, so we're going to build some houses over here." Yeah. So, wow, wow we need to get sure. some land. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, that's my question. How do we get land from yeah. land? How do we do this? So my, my wife and I actually were the owners of all the properties that we sell. Um, one of the different differentiations that I've done with the business is that you have people like realtors or other land investors that they only sell property. Um, they may take me as an owner and then sell it on behalf of me as a middleman. My my I, ancestry lands is about ownership, passing on ownership. I put my money where my mouth is. I have invested in an item that I believe in, that I know is sellable, and it's a product that I intend to hold or pass on. So what we're doing is offering the properties that we sell in right outside of LA area because it's that area is growing. The pandemic pushed people out of LA mm-hmm. and all the surrounding areas, but they still want access to LA. So mm-hmm. you have this migration coming up through the South where millions of people are moving to. And that puts us, the community, if we can take hold of that ownership as people who can make money and build capital and build wealth off of the people who want to come and move to these areas. Mm -hmm. So I always think of it's like being a crocodile. You put your crocodiles, put themselves right where the migration comes through (laughs) to get the biggest matter of food. We'll think the food is money and we're the crocodiles. We need to put ourselves in positions to be able to acquire wealth. Now, you take that out to a greater community, if all of us here own multiple properties in one location, and you know we have, we, we have economic issues that we need through in a pandemic, well, we all control the volume of what's being sold. Mm-hmm. You don't wanna sell your property at 30,000, we all set it at 30,000. We have those night meetings at the barbershop, and we say as a community, as a group, as African Americans or, or any group at minority base, we can say we're going to set our market price and now we control the market now. Mm. So when you're looking at dealing with politicians and you want things done for the community, mm. they're looking at us as people who have power to control factors that they they listen to. Mm. You know, you don't want to sell ice and in a snowstorm, you want to be able to sell something that people that can grab their attention and that's going to give us real power. So we don't do credit checks. We don't do um, interest charges. We keep it very simple because the business is built off creating owners, Mm. not off of putting you on long 10 year loans. Our properties are less than than less than a Benz, but they're more valuable than that. And Mm. the fact that you can farm commercial, um, do agricultural things. And these are in residential areas with McDonald's post office. (laughs) And it's in an actual city. And Mike Tyson has invested um, in 40 acres in that same city to do wow. his business ventures out nice. there. Wow. So, and Eric himself is a property owner. He's bought into that so he can have a multifamily unit to op- have doors that he owns mm-hmm. in a unit. And that's the that's the best part about it is that you're doing 200, $250 payments, $1,000 down. Um, it's a contract that's signed and you're, I'm passing over ownership to people. I'm, I'm the owner passing over my ownership. Mm-hmm. The title is being passed down. It's, you're handing a baton. You're actually showing your results and showing that work. 
And that's what our community needs. We don't need handouts and government checks. We need we need power. We need ownership. And if you don't own property, you're gonna be owned as property. Mm. You know? Ooh, and that's one of the oh, that's a quotable. That's gonna be the title of this episode. Let you know. <laughs> right that right there. Right. Can you oh, so please please drop that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, you don't, if you don't own property, you will be owned as property. Mm. And that's I mean, you think about how this country got started, that's what that's how things began in here it was all about what is considered property yeah. mm-hmm. and as we moved to becoming independence we didn't take back the ownership mm-hmm. we we gave it away we lost it for a job we traded our time our, our time for our hours for for money mm-hmm. and we didn't get back any ownership and power so we we're on 30 years on a bank loan paying interest where we pay more than the loan is worth at the end of the day. We Mm -hmm. make the banks rich and then we still get stuck with a house by the time 30 years comes, you need to update it again. And we we sell the homes and we lose the land ownership and we don't hold on anything that is is the real power there you know and all these properties that we own are in an area that is developing is growing the real estate values are growing since i've started and that's what it is is that you own the properties but i'm still working creating extra value along the way to increase your property worth because i'm bringing more people into that city so i'm growing it like nurturing a plant but our, our people got to wake up and say, OK, there's a room for Jordans, but I got to make priority for ownership. This is something that sure. you can feel, taste and touch. It's not a stock right. where a company can run it into the ground. Mm-hmm. This is something that has been there and will be there after you. And you can taste you can use the land, reuse it, make money off the land. You can rent it out, lease it out yeah. and then you still own it. And that's the game that mm-hmm. we're not seeing and we're not being taught yeah. is that the game is in owning something and letting other people do the work and and use it and you still keep the title mm-hmm. so how does that help your children in the next recession in the next yeah. economy you have a child later on they're going to college they need this but they own some land and i come to them and say hey can i offer you 10 grand or five grand for your property mm-hmm. what does that do to help them out when they need that yeah. when we're losing jobs or losing that for sure Wow. What do you think? My brother has. I want to highlight some <laughs> concept that he just said that's so that's so very important. We're talking. He's alleviated the barriers of entry into land ownership. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. No credit checks. No credit yeah. Easy, easy, flexible payments. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you make a simple down payment, and then here it is. You're on your way to building this foundational asset in your portfolio mm-hmm. is land. And so, yeah. I think that's one of the key things here. I think I'd rather say I own land than I own doors. Factual. Absolutely. Like, I, sure. I feel I feel like that makes, a, I don't know, it just makes a difference. So, how much land can somebody get at one time? Is it how much you want, or is it, like, sectioned off? No, so we have many different properties, all on AncestryLands.com, AncestryLands on YouTube, Facebook. We kind of, we try to promote across the platforms, depending on where you are. Um, you may not have one social media platform, but you we have them all there for you. Mm-hmm. Um, we do drone videos of each property. Um, the properties vary in size. Mm-hmm. They can be down to um, 10,000 square foot properties, which you can build about maybe three, 4,000 square foot of home oh. on that residence. Um, the good thing about this area is that California has made it so that way you can build a less than 2,000 square foot main home, live on that home, and then build a 1,200 square foot separate ADU or ex- additional granny unit that's detached that you can rent out now. So not only does the land, you, you're buying the land, um, you can now create additional revenue while living up there. So now you have an ability to pay off a mortgage Mm -hmm. and then you can have up to two smaller residents up there, but you're only allowed to build on 40% of the land. So we have from a 0.14 acre all the way up to, you know, two, two acres. I've had a 40, but someone came and bought that, but these are 40 acres. Yeah. uh, He's, he's trying to, what he's trying to do is create a small development out of there in a, a, in, kind of um, luxury development, (laughs) right? But I mean, think about it, when we get, I have 40 acres and I said, man, I've lived through my lifetime, my grandfather, and no one's given 40 acres in a mule, but it's not gonna be given. No, You gotta get it. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is said that I I wanna be, you know, kind of a back door, because we're judged by credit, we're judged by everything, you know, that is, is meant to keep us away from that goal. So now I've said, okay, as long as you can make the monthly payment, as long as you can make the down payment, I will give you the title to that land once you pay it off. 
but you got to pay it off. So it's kind of a merit based payment system where if you're making the payments, that's what you need. Everyone needs a helping hand. But who's helping out our people? Yeah, no one. They say they are. But when they get in office, they, you know, they're they're doing different things. But it's not they're not offering anything that you can you can pass on. And think about it. When you own land, you learn things about the land that you now can pass down. So it's not just land as an item or product. Mm -hmm. It's land, the land experience, the land ownership that you're now passing down and educating your kids. Mm -hmm. Right. So now they're saying, my dad, my mom, like I said, my grandfather owned land, my father's bought and built homes on top of land. And it's like, you start to get a sense of pride of who you are. And people mm -hmm. can't just tell you now, you don't have to identify with what's being pushed out there in the media to know who you are. Yeah, sure. right. Listen, man. <laughs> you guys are gonna need to have us back. <laughs> uh, looking at episode two. This is probably, no, not probably. This is absolutely one of the most value-filled yeah. interviews we've ever done. Mm -hmm. uh, we're only on segment one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, so, this is crazy. Like uh, you know, when when you when you run in a business, the goal is to solve problems. Mm -hmm. You solve a lot of people's problems. You have a successful business. Yeah, for sure. I can't. I can't figure out a bigger problem that you are solving by saying no credit check. Yeah, mm. yeah. I can't figure out a bigger problem that you are solving by saying a thousand dollars down, mm -hmm. easy payments. Yeah. Where, where, where is the barrier to entry? Yeah, there, exactly. There oh. is no barrier to entry. Like you said, you just have to be, you have to be serious. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you if you finish this simple task of making these payments, congratulations, you're a landowner. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. This is tremendous, man. I. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> god. I think it's about what else will blow your mind. Tell them about how when you say once you pay the land off, you have it as an asset. How you can use that as equity or as right. a, as as when you want to go for a loan or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So like that. So right. You want to hit on that? Yes, yeah, please. definitely. So please a lot of times when, like, I've gone and looked at getting mortgages and things like that, they always ask you, you know, what collateral do you have? Mm -hmm. So you you have the credit check can be. Let's say everyone had an eight hundred credit check walking in, but what gets you the <coughs> low? <laughs> what gets you the better interest rate? What gets you the better, um, you know, less points on on your actual loan? If you were looking at that aspect, or even if you're going in to buy a conventional car, you now now have land which the bank values mm -hmm. it's something that they look at a car loses its value it depreciates but they know if this land is in an area where people are migrating to I'm seeing the property values go up they now it, it's a, it gives you something that the other person walking with credit and two people walk in the store with great credit and ten thousand dollars one has land one doesn't someone just got another higher point and the, they're looking at you as a business, as a person who has something of value that they want. Well, you have sure. extra collateral. You have collateral. Mm -hmm. Which exactly. means that you have bargaining power at mm -hmm. the table. So right. we also don't just do the easy credit and, and mm -hmm. no credit and, and the, the payments, which can be 65 months. We give you an opportunity to pay it at the cash price if you do it within six months. What? Oh. So you can start the financing, thousand dollars down, two hundred and or two fifty a month, depending on the property, and we give you say, okay, look, you can't pay the cash price. We'll give you six months if you can do it. If not, then you're going the full term until you pay off the balance in full. Okay. So again, everything is aimed at giving people who do not have an opportunity to become real estate owners, mm -hmm. a chance to own property that is not just somewhere, and this is a place where they have a hotel, golf course, you know, they have um, high school, middle school, you're in an area that's growing and developing, that's experiencing growth. We have 90 clients that are either have bought or 50 of them have actually owned properties. And a lot of Hispanic clients are moving through that area and they want land. Yeah. So why are we giving away an opportunity for another group to t get ahead of us yeah. to become landowners not that it's a competition mm -hmm. but we need to have our hand in that pot mm -hmm. for sure for sure and we need to continue to do uh, that's why i'm glad you yeah. talked about coming back because yes. first of all we would love to have you guys back this is something that needs to be reiterated mm -hmm. this is something that needs to be talked about over and over again and people need to understand because 
there is no barrier to entry as far to entry as far as I'm concerned. And just I, I'm just so pleased with the fact that we were able to get you on here to talk about this. Um, my wife and I are going to discuss. Why, like, we buy it. Love We're it. Absolutely yeah. buying it. Like, we will bring it to our parents. Doubt. We will bring it to our okay. parents. Yep. Absolutely. And our kids. And our, all and our, our kids. kids are grown. Okay. So our youngest is twenty two. So y'all need to get in on this. Oh yeah. However so, much you can put in, put in, because yeah. we need all we own some land. You said you had ninety clients. Um, I have ninety total contracts that I've done in the last four years. Yeah, we um, can I have take that over. Sixty five <laughs> open contracts of people who are making payments on land, which is completely. Do- it's completely doable and replicatable in the right. sense of when you're a landowner, you will get tons of mail for people who want to buy your, your land. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. All the time as a landowner. I, as a land investor, get letters from other land investors, but we've had uh, about 50 new owners created in the last four years that have just come from my method of doing that and a lot of the clients there are more of our people waking up and they're starting to get their hands in the pot it's not just people in this area but they're waking up and understanding that you don't need to own land where you live you need to own land where the land is going to be of value yeah sure right and where I picked that, I've been working there in four years, California City in California. Once I saw Mike was in there, I was like, man, this guy came. I would have yeah. sold him my 40 for the <laughs> right? 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 Just I Mike. Mike, Mike just, yeah. Just like, Mike, right. Um, exactly. And it's one of the bigger areas for gasoline production, um, you know, out of California. You're right out, you're an hour and a half away from the LA area. And it's about being in that path where people are coming up from the South and they're planning themselves at. Mm-hmm. The, this migration is happening. Another great migration is happening, and we need to be the people who own property in that area where people are coming and saying, "I want the land." Well, here's my price. Yeah, yeah. You know, I once started selling this property for in a typical property in this area. I sold four years ago for about four to five thousand dollars. The realtors are selling them for about thirty, twenty to thirty. All our properties are under twenty thousand. That's a final price. On payments. Yeah, on payments. Cash, 10 to 15. Mm-hmm. And again, you still get six months to do that. Now, you can't get a car that way. No. You can't get a house that No one's going <laughs> to give you six months in that way. But again, it's all aimed at what we do is about giving that access, getting people a leg up to get ahead in the economy. What, what's happening now? And our... The people who want it are the people who are looking for that opportunity to be there. And we're presenting it to them. And it's a beautiful thing. Oh my God. Do you do you guys go on a lot of podcasts and, and talk about this a lot? Well, no, we're starting our podcast run. This has been <laughs> the first time that we. I think this year when we met you all at the Melanin Market, it's been the introduction for people seeing what we're doing and our message mm-hmm. and things like that. And I think it just happened at the right time. But no, we're we're getting out there. Oh, you know, man. yeah, this it, is great, guys. Is. This is it really is. good, man. I, um, we gotta, <laughs> we gonna get to this next segment. <laughs> much appreciate. We getting ready to get into my favorite segment. <laughs> yes. They already know Ninja Business, and since oh, wow. you guys oh, have a no credit check, <laughs> it's kinda- since you guys don't have any credit check, then I'm sure. <laughs> You've dealt with some ninja business. <laughs> and we're going to get all into the ninja business. Please tell us about it. Not right now. When we come back, <laughs> listen, y'all, stay locked in. This is the Entrepreneur Beings Podcast. We're sitting here with Ancestry Lands. Y'all are going to love this. I can't wait to get, oh, my God. I'm just, I'm, I'm like overwhelmed with excitement right now. Like, this is crazy. Uh-oh. So we will be back. And that's it. Stay tuned, y'all. <laughs> 